and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So today I have for you my top 13 of 2022. Originally I was going to do my top 12, but uh, the books spoke for themselves and I needed to do 13. I There was two that I kept being like, do I swap them? Do I not swap them? Like, do I put one in instead of the other one? And then I was like, that's it. I'm putting them both in here. This is my channel. My rules. I can do what I want. So I tried to actually rank these. I don't think I've ever done it where I've actually tried to put them in order from like like my actual like favorite, but I tried. I figured, you know what, it doesn't matter because if they're on this list, they're my favorite anyways. It doesn't matter what order they're in, but like I'm going to try to put them in order. So this is a attempt at putting, like I've read over 200 books this year. So to pick only 13 as like my top favorite, like it was, it was tricky. So let's just dive in. So coming in at number 13, we've got With Love from London by Sarah Iho Dio. I never know how to pronounce her name. Now this one took me by surprise because it was one of those books that was like, so when I did my Instagram recommend me 12 books, this was one of them. They basically just said, read this author. So I picked her newest book and I really kind of had no expectations going into it. And then I read it and I just loved it to pieces. I bawled my bloody eyes out during this one. We are following a young woman who is going to London to deal with her mom's estate. Her mom owns a bookstore, so she's going to go figure out what she needs to do with the bookstore. But her mom has not been in her life since she was very, very young. Um, so she's trying to figure out like who her mom really is. She finds letters and basically like almost put, gets put on like a little mini scavenger hunt. So we're following her perspective, but we're also following the letters and it's just heartbreaking and beautiful. And I'm so glad that I read this one this year. Then another one that made me ball my eyes out. We've got Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. This one I read in January. Like there's actually two books I think that I read in January in this like top 12 like and it stuck with me this one is about a woman who has recently gotten out of jail and she is going back to this town where her daughter is living with her like child's like grandparents and she wants to figure out a way to get back in her daughter's life and she ends up kind of bumping into this like bartender who could potentially help her but also kind of a love story as well very heartbreaking and I just remember like not wanting to put this one down and just really being sucked into it emotionally and just I, I was all in on this one so this one is number 12. Now for the two that I was like do I put this one in 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 so we're gonna talk about them at the same time and this is what made it end up being humming 13 was did I put the royals next door in by Karina Hale where do I put Part of Your World in by Abby Jimenez? And I feel like they're both kind of similar in the needs of, like, they both have something to do with kind of, like, mental illness. And, I mean, this one doesn't really, like, deal with mental illness per se, but it does talk a lot about, like, narcissism and, like, trying to own up to a parent's expectations. And this one is just, she's trying to deal with her mother's mental illnesses. So, like, it, family. Talk it down to that. Um, I just recently talked about these two and my favorite from this half of the year. So if you want more information on them, then you can probably check that one out as well. But again, this is a like woman who's from the city falling in love with a guy from the small town and their love story. And then this one is about a woman who falls in love with the Royals bodyguard as they come to this small island to kind of get away and she falls in love with the bodyguard. So both really good reads. I couldn't choose between them, so they both made it to this list. We've got The Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Birchall. Now, this one is something that, like, I wasn't expecting to love as much as I did either. This one was a book that I listened to on audio, and it literally was having me laugh out loud. This reminded me kind of of, like, a Princess Diaries kind of story where you're following this woman who is essentially like a bridesmaid for hire. Like you can hire her, she'd be your maid of honor, she'd be your bridesmaid, whatever you need her to be. And she gets hired to be part of this like elitist wedding and like the bride doesn't really want her to be in the wedding even though like she gets hired by the bride's mother. And um, she ends up falling in love with his 
rather. It's one of my favorites, and I'm already forgetting it. Yes, older brother. I was right. Okay. <laughs> got nervous for the last second that it was like a cousin or something but no it's her brother and it just was like laugh out loud funny where like you got different parts like in between chapters of like silly emails that she would get and like email requests and like just it was just an all over like good time this was like definition rom-com right here where you've got the romance but you've got some funny to go right along with it We've got Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This was a book that I just, like, have really fond memories of. Um, just because I remember this was, like, the one random day where Sydney took a nap for me, which she, like, never would do. And I just remember opening it up and just reading it in that entire nap period where I just start to finish devoured this book. And so I was like, that has to be right there, like, a favorite, because for it to, like, entrap me so much. Like, I can read a book in one sitting, but never necessarily, like, in a two-hour span. Like, normally it's, like, I just read it all day type of thing. And this one I read so fast. And we're following a girl who's with her boyfriend. She's kind of, like, working at a hotel. And their hope is to, like, obviously not stay in this one location forever. But, like, her boyfriend ends up chartering this boat for these like kind of like rich girls and he's like hey want to come with me and like things go weird and like people go missing and then people turn up dead and it's just it was a wild time and just because it was so unputdownable I had to put this in this list because it's just one of those books that will stick with me for a while of remembering that it was just such a good time then we've got The Wedding Bell by Christy Woodson Harvey I feel like in the beginning when I read this, like, I could not stop talking about this book. Now, we are following a woman who's about to get married, and she is in love with this. Hold on. She's, like, very invested in the Vanderbilts, and she's about to get married, and then she kind of runs away from her marriage before it can even happen. But we're following her. We're following her grandmother, and we're following one of the Vanderbilts. Her grandmother is hilarious. And I just love dual timeline stories where, like, you know they're going to eventually connect in some way, and then you got to find out how and why, and just, I really liked this one. Like, and I love that it's just, like, tied together with a wedding veil, and, like, you know me and stories that have to do with weddings. I'm instantly sold. And I was leery about this because I really liked the Peach Tree Bluff series. And then I read another book by her and I wasn't a huge fan and I kind of was like hesitant to reading anything else by her. And then I picked this up and I really remembered why I love her book so much. And I just love her attitude about women and love and romance. And it just, I would love a sequel to this. Can we get a sequel to this? That would be awesome. We've got Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is one that, like, I remember putting in my cart thinking, like, oh, maybe I'll like it someday. But, like, I really didn't have many high expectations for this one. And I was sitting in here one day. I happened to wake up before Sydney. And I, like, and I think, yeah, I had Sawyer at this point. And I had a moment where they were both asleep. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'll come in here, sit for a second, figure out what I want to read. And I picked this up and I read, like, a chapter. I was like, I'm just going to read a chapter or two, see if I like it. I got 50 pages in in that time, and I did not want to put it down. I was really bummed when they woke up because I was like, I just want to keep reading. And that's always, like, such a great sign when, like, you pick up a book and you just don't want to stop. And this one is following a case of when she was a teenager, there were a bunch of murders that happened, a bunch of missing girls, and her dad goes to jail for it. Now it's years later. It's, like, coming up on the anniversary of it. She's a, She just gets engaged. She's trying to, like, plan a wedding. And, um, all of a sudden the murders start to happen again, like very similar to it. So she's like, is there a copycat? Is my dad doing something from jail? What's going on? Did he actually not really commit the murders? Like what happened? And it just spirals from there. And it just was one of those books that keeps you guessing. And I really loved it because I thought I potentially had something figured out. And it turned out to be like a double reveal, which I always love. Farley Sager does that with his books where he's like, 
you think you know my twist? Yes, again. And it just, I love a double twist. I love a double twist so much. So this one was a fantastic debut, and I've read from her again, and I still love her books again. So this had to make my favorites. Then we've got The Bodyguard by Catherine Sender. This is another one, again, kind of like that, like, rom com -y, like, perfection. This is probably, I think, one of my favorites by her. Like, I obviously have loved Catherine Sender, but I think this might take the cake for my favorite one right now. We're following a woman who's a bodyguard, and she is kind of down on her luck with her mom is just, her mom has just passed. Her boyfriend breaks up with her. And she's just, like, kind of mentally not there, but she really wants to get lost in her work. And her boss is like, no, I'm taking you off the case that you wanted to go on. And she's like, are you kidding? And then she ends up stuck in the in town, and they put her on this, like, guy's, as his bodyguard. He is a celebrity, and he's coming home to essentially take care of his mom, who is going through cancer treatments. And um, he wants to kind of come to town and kind of be incognito. So they hire her as a bodyguard to protect him. And he doesn't want his family to know that he has a bodyguard. So she kind of goes in under the pretenses of being his girlfriend. And it just, it was humorous. It was funny. It was just perfection. If you haven't tried Catherine Center, I would suggest starting here. Then, oh guys, we're down to the top four. We've got It Could Be Anyone by Jamie Lynn Hendricks. This one, you want an unputdownable, like, you hate everybody, but you cannot wait to finish it type of book? Like, this is it. Like, this is, she writes some of the most unlikable characters, but you find yourself so glued. It's like the train wreck that you can't stop watching. In this one, we are going to a wedding, and the groom dies <laughs> right there in the wedding. And then we're looking at the five friends who could have possibly murdered him? And it was wild. You know me. Again, love books with weddings. Out of whodunit to it, and I'm sold. Jamie Lynn Hendricks have, has written two books so far that have been published. This one and Finding Tessa. In both books I read this year, in both books I gave five stars to. And you can guarantee when she comes out with two books next year, they will also be five stars. This one had a really rough publishing experience. Um, it was supposed to get published, and then, like, it was weirdly, like, out of stock on pub day. And, like, so it did not do so great, um, which makes me really mad because she has an idea for a sequel to this book. But because it didn't do well, even though it was, like, totally the publisher's fault, like, it wasn't even in all the Barnes & Nobles that they said it was going to be. It. Like, it was, like, a mess. So she probably won't ever get to release the sequel, and I really want the sequel. So can you please go buy this book so that way people will know how amazing it is? Please and thank you. <clears throat> Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. My feelings for this book are so immense. We've got Marcellius the Octopus. He is my favorite character that I have read all year. It was just following this older woman who is working at the aquarium. She cleans the tank with Marcellius there. You get Marcellius's perspective. You get her perspective. Her husband is dead. Her son is dead. And she is essentially trying to figure out how to move on with her life and what that means for her. Does she pack up and leave? What does she do? We're also following this man who is kind of also kind of down on his luck. He's broke and he's trying to figure out what to do. So he decides that he's going to try to find his birth father who happens to be in the same town, and he also has a connection with Marcellius. And just, I love when there's multiple perspectives who don't necessarily know each other, but find a way to relate anyways. I'm sorry I keep drinking this video. My throat this week has been so scratchy. Like, it doesn't even hurt. It's just like there's this, like, one scratch right here. And when I talk a lot, it gets irritated, and then it causes me to cough, even though there's no, like, no reason. But besides that, um, so yeah, this, I cried. It's a beautiful story. It's wholesome. It's just, I would love to reread it one day. The Marcellius is the best. If that doesn't convince you to read it, just read it from Marcellius. 
book number two, The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. I don't know why this one has not gotten more buzz. It's a Good Morning America pick and I feel like nobody has read it and everybody who has read it has really enjoyed it. This one, like, shocked me. I pre-ordered it even though I have no real reason why I pre-ordered it. And, like, you would never think, like, a book about a violin would get me so hooked, but it did. And it's about this man. He is kind of like this violin prodigy. And he wakes up one morning, he's in a hotel, and his violin case is empty. Like, he goes home, and then he realizes his violin case is empty. And now he's got to go on this hunt for his violin, because he's a prodigy, and he needs this violin, and this violin is worth tons of money. So it's like, did somebody steal it to sabotage him? Did somebody steal it to make money? Is his family trying to do it because his family wants this money from this violin? Like, who did it? So it's kind of got, like, this mystery suspense, but it's also got so much more going on than that. And, like, he's also got, like, a lot of prejudices against him because he's a black man playing a violin. Like, that's not typically, like, it doesn't fit the mold or the stereotype. So, like, there's lots of conversations around that. And I just, like, could not put this book down. And I read this, I think, like, in February, and it has still stuck with me this whole time. So definitely one that made my top two and then my number one of the year black cake by Charmaine Wilkerson this one was just this one I feel like most of these just like took me by completely surprise like they weren't books that I really went into being like these are definitely gonna be my favorites and this one like was about this family like there's this boy and this girl and they're essentially they're siblings but they're kind of estranged and their mother has passed away so they come together for the funeral and when they're there the attorney is like I've got some this like tape that you need to listen to from your mother and she essentially leaves them a black cake that they can eat when they're done listening to the tape and by listening to this tape they are getting their mother's backstory and they're figuring out who she really was as a person how did she get to where she was and essentially hopefully bringing them together. And so you're getting their perspective of them like listening to this tape. But you're also going back into the past and their mother's trials and tribulations of how she got where she is in the world. And it was again another beautiful story. It was one I didn't want to put down. Like I read like so much of it in one sitting and I didn't want to stop but I had to stop. And it just I love books like that when like you have to stop but you really really don't want to. And this just was so impactful and so good and definitely one that like I didn't expect to love as much as I did so yeah those are my top 13 of 2022 thank you for letting me do 13 instead of 12 I hope you guys enjoyed do we have anything in common let me know down below and I will see you guys really soon bye everybody